Y'all, y'all know I'm in here making this bacon, right? I'm make a little breakfast. I don't do it too often. Maybe out of a month, I might get up three to four times, sometimes five, and make breakfast. But I, they got plenty of stuff in here to eat. They can do their cereal. They can do their own waffles. They can do their toast. They can do their muffins. They going to have their breakfast, okay? And sometimes they get them, don't want nothing, and they'll wait till afternoon, dinner time. That's just how it is. That's how the appetite go. But I was sitting here thinking. I got to scroll on Facebook, and I seen I got some messages. And I'm going to try to say this as respectful as I can, y'all, because my mouth can go there. That's my dog on uh, air fryer and biscuits in there. Anyway, I got uh, messages from three of the kids' father. Three of the kids got the same father, okay? He was married or is married. I don't know if they together or divorced and separated or whatever the case may be. But anyway, I got a little rapport with her, so I wasn't surprised when she inboxed me. But uh, that message, no, I wasn't feeling the goddamn message. So... Malika, which is one of the girls, the kids, her birthday was August 5th. The older girl, her birthday is August 29th, both of them, that's their daddy, okay? And Malachi, that's who this father belongs to, those three kids. Malika turned 11, Makayla turned 15, and Malachi is 16. So both of their birthdays back to back. So it was somewhere around their birthday, I guess, because I don't look at those messages. I'm not even in the inbox. I'm just scrolling and happened to, it stuck out. So I said, let me click on here and see who inboxed me. And she said that Dika wanted to say happy birthday, send us some money, want, is that a number? And not in response, so I guess she waited even and got closer to Malik, but Kyla's birthday, which is the 28th. It got closer to that day. I'm looking at dates, but I'm not really sure. I'm going on a visual in my head. And then he reached out again. Can I call? I want to talk to them. Uh, I want to give them some money. All this old bullshit. I didn't say nothing back. I ain't going to say nothing back. Because I don't want to be ranting. I don't even want to be ranting to y'all. It's because I might let some words fly loose that I really don't want to use. And I don't want no flags on my, on my dog on content. You know, I might spur one out here and there. But the way I be feeling sometimes, that's when it comes to this type of stuff, I be want to let loose, baby. You hear me? I said let loose on that ass. First of all, my daughter passed away. He was in jail. They didn't have no best relationship. They had a very volatile relationship on and off, on and off. You know what I'm saying? Even when we moved down here and he got out of jail and they connected and he act like he going to do the right thing. We, my husband at the time, you know what I'm saying, who I'm still married to, but we was actually a couple then. I was, I was in the marriage then. Y'all know, y'all know how it is. We allow him to come and even spend the night and talk about what they going to do going forward to help her get out our place and be a family or just co-parent or whatever it is. He acted like he was going to do the right thing. We had some drinks. Everybody having a good time. Baby, he went upstairs acting a zip damn fool. I didn't know it at the time because she didn't say nothing after he left. So that ended that. And I think that was the last time they really tried to work it out. Another time he came down and he was over her house because this time she moved. But they didn't do nothing either. It was just a fact that he was over there. He Because, you know, he the type of guy. And there's a lot of guys that do this. Not all guys do this. But a lot of guys... They act like this about their kids all the time. It's all about you. Because that's, this is going to explain to y'all why we ain't heard from him since she passed away other than the time that he came down when she passed away. He got out of jail three months later. He came to see the kids. That was it. There ain't been no real connection. There ain't been no consistency or none of that because she's no longer here. She was, it was always about her. Because when they got into arguments and she didn't want to talk to him, okay, cool, fuck you. I just want to talk to my shorty. I want to talk to my... Now he ain't thinking about them kids. Take them for granted. And that's not to say that he ain't got some type of warped type of love. Because everybody's definition of love is totally different. And I don't care what the definition that you or he or she may have. The definition that I have is the only one that counts to me. So, he come back. He got out of jail. He cried about my daughter. We made plans. He had a good time. He had pizza. Okay, we talked a couple of times after that. He FaceTimed him. He sent a couple of, couple of dollars. Maybe two or three times. After that, it was like he went off the grid. About four or five months went back. Day before Christmas, he called. Well, I was going through, but I'm, I know y'all don't celebrate Christmas like this, so next Friday I get paid, and I'm going to send them some money. Cool. Okay, whatever. Even though I got in this butt, saying the same stuff I've been saying since he was 15, 16 years old. Him and my daughter was together as teenagers and young adults, and just starting to have kids, get into it. I'm schooling them, and checking them, letting them know what's going to be acceptable in my house. You can't come over here without calling me. You can't spend the night. No, you can't. You can't lay on my floor and go to sleep. When I say you can come at 3, you better be here at 3. When I say you got to go at 7, you got to be out the door at 7, not lay up. No, I wouldn't play no games, and I'm still that way. So next Friday come back, we expecting to hear from him to send the money. 
and keep up the consistency of, okay, now I know I messed up, but I'm going to be consistent now. I was just having a hard time, and now I got a job. I'm good. That never happened. He never called, never sent no money or nothing. So now, when it comes August 5th, Malika's birthday, and then Kyla's birthday a couple weeks after that, now you want to have your wife inbox my what's our number. First of all, you should have my number, even though you ain't called it. When you first got out and we would just talk them a couple times and all that, why would you lose my number if they was importance of you? You should always be able to have contact with them, no matter what. Because I understand you as a single father or a father with a messed up kind of marriage or a marriage where y'all really ain't got the room and y'all good with y'all little family, but you ain't really got room for no three kids and all like that. And your schedule and you're working and it's ups and downs. I get it. But you're supposed to be consistent. You're supposed to be checking in on them at least every three days. You're supposed to be FaceTiming them. You're supposed to make arrangements to come see them in face to face at least once a month, if nothing else. You ain't over two and a half, three hours away. So. With that being said, no, I'm not going to answer her because I might rant and say some cuss words and I don't want her to be offended. She ain't got nothing to do with it. I know she relaying the message. And last I heard, they was divorced or separated. So that don't mean they got to be nasty to each other, nothing like that. So I can understand why he'll ask her. But no, you too up and down, too flaky, too wishy-washy. You want to be father of the day one day. Next time you want to be father of the year. Next day you want to make all these lies and promises and I didn't check you and schooled you and taught you and forgave you. And it ain't finna happen no more. These kids don't need that. I got a schedule. I got shit I'm doing. I got stuff I'm going through. And we good. So I'm not finna change my schedule or go around my life and, and oh, I was finna do content, but he want to call and FaceTime. And all the time, he ain't going to keep nan promise. It's fake and phony, and they don't want to talk to him. But when they get 18, 21, 30 years old, whatever they feel like they want to, if they ever want to, they'll contact you. God willing, you'll still be around and in good mental health. Because right now, your mental health ain't right. It ain't never been right. Y'all young folks out here popping pills, drinking, drugging, hoeing, slamming kind of like those, messing with all kind of hope. Man, stop. And you want to fit the kids in when it's convenient for you and think you daddy of the year or mama of the year. No, it's not popping over here. I am not my daughter and I ain't finna go over there. I tried to do the right thing when it first came out and after her passing away. But no, it's a wrap. Don't call me. Don't inbox me. It's all.